Um, I'm first, before I start, um, I want to thank Pastor Dave for the opportunity that he every now and then gives me, which is to take his place, and he takes my place. And you may have noticed when he took my place, he all of a sudden got a lot better looking. No, no. So, before we start with uh, today's teaching, I'd ask you just to bow your head while I say a short prayer, please. Dear Father, we thank you for everyone gathered here. As we study your word, we ask you would come by your Holy Spirit and inspire our hearts today. Come fill our lives with your love, fill our conversations always with grace and truth. Fill our time today with your presence. We ask this for your glory and praise in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, as Pastor Dave said, um, I'm going to be talking over the next, uh, actually through the month of October, and my, my topic for the month of October is something that I hope is going to challenge you. Okay? And you'll see where I'm going in a minute. But what I want to start with is my topic is called Moving God from Your Head to Your Heart. Many years ago, I went to my family doctor, and it was, um, it was after I had a heart attack. And I said to him, I don't get this. I said, it's been six months or so, and I keep still getting these pains in my chest and stuff like that. And he looked at me and he smiled and he said, that's because you're worried. You're worried it might happen again. And you keep thinking about it. And I said, well, if I'm thinking about it, how come my chest hurts? That's the last thing in the world I need to hurt right now. I'd rather have a headache than to have my, my chest. And he said to me, he said, well, I've been a doctor for a long, long time, and what I've come to understand is this. There's three types of people. There's people who do their worries in their stomach, and they worry in their stomach. And so they get indigestion, and they get constipation, and all that kind of nasty stuff. He said, then there's people who worry in their head. And he said, most of those people display their worry with a sore neck, a headache, tight shoulders, they get, you know, all those kinds of things. And he said, and then there's you. <coughs> and he said, don't worry, there are others like you. He said, you do your thinking in your heart. Which kind of sounded strange to me because I thought my brain was for thinking. And what I realized was it was true. And generally speaking, we fall into one of two categories. And that is, we either look at things with our head, or we look at things through looking through our heart. And what I want to challenge you over the next three weeks is to look at, first, are you a head thinker or a heart thinker? Because which of those two you are will help determine something else. That's whether you are a person who has a head faith or a heart faith. And there is a big difference between those two. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So. between 
head thinking and heart thinking. Okay? So, people who think with their heads tend to be very logical. Dave mentioned that earlier. They're very, very logical people. People who think with their hearts tend to be a little more on the emotional side. People who think with their heads weigh things. They think about them a lot. And they weigh them. Should I do this? Should I do that? If I do this, then maybe if I do that. And they go back and forth. Okay. Art thinking people would rather talk to people in groups. Because then you get help. You've all had those head thinking people. My father was one of those. Oh my God. My father used to say when I'd come to him and I, I had to make a decision, he'd say, well, get out a piece of paper. Split it in half. Write the good stuff on this side and the bad stuff on that side. I said that to my daughter the other day. She looked at me like I had two heads. She said, first off, I'm not going to get paper out. I have a computer. Anyway, hard, hard thinking people really are focused on much more on relationships with one another. Head thinking people like facts and figures. That's my eldest daughter. She's in university, ask her a question, she can give you all the numbers, okay? The percentages of why this and percentages about that. Heart thinkers, on the other hand, tend to like things that involve love, they tend to be empathetic, they tend to look at how people are bonded together. Head thinking people, like my daughter, they, they tend to gravitate towards people who are similar. So my daughter's group of friends are all what I call nerds. Okay, like they're, they're all ten times smarter than I'll ever be. Okay? But the other side of that is hard thinking people like that one-on-one. That -on -one. They like the groups. They like the intimacy with each other. Head thinking people, on the other hand, tend to be independent, much more independent. My daughter's very independent. Um, hard thinking people tend to rely on feelings to make, to make their decisions. And they, as I said, they base their decisions on logic and rational thoughts. Heaven forbid that a person who thinks with their head should ha ever have an irrational thought or a thought that doesn't make absolute sense to them, that they can't justify with facts and figures. That would make my daughter would, would have to go to her room and have a good cry if that ever happened. Unfortunately for those of us who are heart thinkers, we tend to be a little more on a roller coaster in our life. We have more highs and lows. But the truth of all of this really is nobody is absolutely, totally one or the other. We all have some of each. But we do tend to be more of one than the other. And you're probably sitting wondering, what has this got to do with anything to do with God? Well, let's just, let's just move on a second here. And I'll try and apply this to our faith. And in our faith, I believe that we have those of us who hold most of our faith in our heads. And we have those who hold their faith in their heart. And we also have some who are some of each. Let me explain that a little bit to you. If you look at a person who holds their head in their, their faith in their head, they tend to rely on their physical senses and evidence. Just what Dave said today. Show me God. Let me touch him. Heart people tend to be more involved in the emotional part. Head faith people are more often asking, show me and I will then believe. If you have faith in your heart, you believe in Christ first, knowing that eventually he will show you. But your belief is there first. Truth of the matter is, in all the research and everything that's been done, head faith is it's very difficult to have bad faith and to
to truly be saved. Heart faith really is our true salvation. Unfortunate thing with head faith, and I've met a lot of people like it who are who see themselves as very religious and all of that type of stuff, but they're also very caught up in what they know and, and all the facts, and they can quote the Bible and they can they can quote any passage from the Bible that you want. And, and the feeling becomes that, that that makes them a person of strong faith. That alone doesn't do it, unfortunately. For those who have hard faith, they learn to not quote scripture, but to live scripture. They learn to live like the Bible asks. Head faith people... They may feel they understand the Bible, but they understand it at an intellectual level. So the difficulty they have is moving from understanding to actually believing. Whereas those with heart faith, they don't need proof. They believe in the miracles and the deeds of God. And people of head faith tend to very much like the rules and, and all the procedures with organized religion. Um, people of heart faith really believe that having heart faith changes their life. So, you can see that, I guess what I'm making a case for here is that our, our faith needs to be faced in our hearts. Mm. And I believe, and, and my own personal experiences and having been to a number of churches, is that we have drifted away from that as Christians and too much of our faith is taking place in our heads. If you look at Proverbs, Proverbs says in Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with your heart, and don't rely on your intellectual understanding. Romans goes on to add, For it is, worth, it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. There are many other passages in the Bible that indicate that, that God wants us to be people of heart and people who believe in their hearts, not in their heads. And in fact, I would put forward that without belief, there probably is little chance of salvation. And that's difficult. Because as Dave said earlier, it's really hard to believe things we can't see with our heads. We like to be able to see what we want to believe in. Okay? We really do. As human beings, that's part of our makeup. And what's really, really hard, and Dave used a great example today, is an invisible God. Wow. How do I believe in something I can't see, I can't touch, I can't feel? It's very, very difficult. But that's why we have the word faith. That's what faith is about. We tend, as people, to want to, I think, intellectualize God. We want to, we want to put God up here so that we can understand Him. And, and that may be a very foolish thing. And... So we tend to lean towards very organized religion. Does anybody know um, what I mean when I use the term autonomous car? They're the latest vehicles being made. They drive you. Do you, all, do you, all, do you know what I mean? Like you don't have to steer them, you don't have to do anything. You, do, you just program them, you jump in and away you go. That's sort of in my mind a little bit what organized religion is like. When it's really, really organized. And it's comfortable for people. They jump into it, 
and there's somebody telling them when to pray, how to pray, who to pray, uh, what to sing, how much money to give, uh, you can do this, you can't do that, but it's all laid out. It's sort of like getting into that car and closing the door, and away you go on, on your, your religious journey. And all you got to do is sit back, and when you get to the end, get out, and now you're where you are. Hopefully it's heaven. And I don't, I don't think that that's where we're supposed to go. Okay? And I think the other thing is that we don't, nor will we ever be able to understand God. Okay? I mean, God is so much bigger and smarter than all of us anyway. Um... There's no way we can understand everything. So, trying to deal with God only in our head and using our brain and our intellect is kind of foolish. It's sort of like me trying to understand quantum physics. Or harder than that, trying to understand my lovely wife. <laughs> Neither of which can I do. Okay? But... It's oh, oh, oh. you get up here with me, you fair day. Um, so trying to understand God is is probably oh, it's gonna be a long ride back to New Hampshire. If I get to ride, with you. might be walking. Yeah. So I think that. It just makes sense. We don't have the intellectual capacity to understand our God. He is so much superior than us. So, but what we do understand, and what he gave us, was the ability to understand and to feel love. And we all know that when it comes right down to it, God is love. So, love takes place in your heart. The worst situations I've ever gotten into was when I tried to deal with love in my head. That's my wife. Okay. It don't work. It don't work for me. I'm like what you just did. Yeah. And we, so we know about God in terms of love. And the really good thing about dealing with God from our hearts is there's a really fantastic thing that happens. And, and that's where I want to go with this. And it's called the peace that pass all understanding. And it's from Philippians. And it's Philippians says, and this is, I think, one of the neatest passages in the Bible. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which pass, surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This peace, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, and we will talk a little bit more about it, I realize we're getting late, but I want to just end today, and, and I read a really good description of, and the connection I want you to make is that we're going to work on having God in our hearts, not our heads, over the next two or three weeks. And this, for this, we come to have that peace. And I'm going to describe that. It's probably one of the best I've, I've read. The believer who places his or her full faith in a loving God and is thankful all the time will, will possess a supernatural peace. An inner calm will become part of their heart. The faithful believer will know peace. Their heart and mind will be guarded by it. Despite all that goes on in their lives and in the world. No one, especially those who don't know Christ, will be able, be able to understand that peace that they have. To most, it will remain a mystery how someone who has that peace
can be so calm in the midst of any trouble. The peace that comes from being in a right relationship, a heart relationship with God, is not the peace of this world. This world's peace depends on having everything going well. If things are going well, then we feel peaceful. But when things go crazy, our peace quickly disappears. Jesus made the distinction between his peace and the world's peace in John when he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. What Christ and God gives us when we believe, truly, truly believe with our hearts, is peace. And it is a peace that we may never understand. But it is the most amazing thing. And if you can imagine, and we all go through troubles and, and the world gets crazy, but if you can imagine inside of you, when everything else is going crazy, you are still calm and you are still able to deal with it. Because you know, you know in the place you need to know the most that God is with you and God will never leave you. So, next week, we're going to look at a little more on what is that peace that passes all understanding. But I got a question, and I'm not going to have you do it today because we're, we're running late today, and I want to respect your time. But I do want to leave you with a question. Two questions, okay? Promise me you'll at least think about them on the way home. First question is, where is your faith? In your head or in your heart? And be honest with yourself. Don't pretend. Okay? Don't, don't necessarily, don't try and give the teacher the answer he wants. Okay? I want an honest answer to that. And the second one, which we'll get to next, next week as well is, and this is a good one, who is God? Who is God? Okay, thank you.